You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. I still feel like a lot of people are counting us out. We just want to come in and fight. Nobody's going to be able to like run with us over and over and over again. So we all play together, play our role. We can be any team. It's huge for us because we always bring a good crowd for our games. The excitement of playing Friday night in the end of basketball. I mean, there's there's nothing like it. Every game that we play now is a championship conference game. I hope that we come out with a championship mindset and cha championship mentality. As the saying goes, there is more than one way to skin a cat. Skin a panther, though, well, that's uh, decidedly more difficult. Both Concordia and Snyder in the hunt for the SAC title. Panthers, one of the highest scoring offenses in the entire state of Indiana. Concordia, one of the best defenses in the area. Two very different teams with the same conference championship goal. Josh A. and joining us now with your Highlights Zone Game of the Week. Josh. Thanks, Glenn. At the beginning of the season, you had to figure Snyder would be in the mix for the SAC title. The Panthers, led by a talented senior class that includes Carson Jenkins, Grant Brown, Aiden Lambert, and Elijah Davis. Concordia, on the other hand, a little shorter on experience. The Cadets arriving a little ahead of schedule with zero seniors on the roster. Concordia at Snyder, it is your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. At 4-0 in the conference, Concordia came in all alone atop the SAC standings. Snyder, though, right behind at 3-1 and, and with the head-to-head -head edge on Homestead thanks to last Friday's Game of the Week win over the Spartans. First quarter action, Jordan Lee gets a nice look from the arc, but he's short. But Grant Brown is there for the and one putback. Snyder was in control for the first eight minutes. Next quarter, Carson Jenkins scoops the loose ball and Aiden Lambert says we have takeoff. That puts Snyder ahead 34 to 18, but the Cadets find a spark as Cole Hayworth pulls off the rim rocker thanks to that gorgeous bounce pass from a Johnny Washington. Concordia trails though 38 to 29 of the half. Third quarter, Carson Jenkins goes deep on that triple. He finished with a team high 34 points, but the Cadets wouldn't quit. Final minute of play. Washington with a step back triple. He finished with a team high 35 at Concordia, only trails by six. Next possession, Avery Cook, the freshman, is cooking from deep, and it's only a one score game. Now, Concordia does get one last look. Washington from about 60 feet, and it's all glass. Snyder hangs on to win 70 to 67. The Panthers are now in the driver's seat for the SAC crown. Well, yeah, I mean, for sure. I know I'm just trying to come out and get the win for my team. Big SAC wins, we need them. So we'll, just building momentum, playing together as a team, playing our game. I mean, we're, we're, we have a lot of confidence in what we can do, so we're just going to keep going and doing it. It's so good because now we know we're control of our own destiny. We just got to win out and then we'll have the championship. It's going to test how bad we really want it. We got to come to practice, uh, work really hard, be together as a team, and just attack next week with positive attitude. Next up, Snyder is at DeKalb on Wednesday, then at Carroll next Friday. Concordia is at New Haven on Tuesday, then hosts Northside next Friday. Glenn, back to you. All right, speaking of those Northside legends, star sophomore Tay Johnson out with a broken wrist. You see it there. They hope to have him back by sectional time as the legends hosting uh, uh, the Homestead Spartans. That means, you know, a steady diet to that guy, Fletcher Lawyer. Then the Future Purdue Boilermaker with the dish to Grant Leeper. Leeper, the and one. He had 17 points and nine rebounds, did Leeper. Hope that in control early, but hey, Jordan Green starts to go off. Green hits three straight jumpers to get Northside back in this one. Then it's Kyron Kalpawicki with the three for Homestead. He had 15 points, and it's a 10-point Homestead lead in the first 20 to 10. In the second, Ronald Collins, the third, dropping in the tray to tie it at 30, but Lawyer. Too tough. Watch him get the basket here. Lawyer had 26 and 10 rebounds to boot as Homestead beats Northside 85 to 59. Last Friday, Carroll earning its first win of the season. Could the Chargers earn win numero dos against Southside? Where first quarter, Carroll's Jackson Pardon with the pilfer and the pair. Pardon me, he had 12 points and Carroll out to an early lead. Hanson Hafner would kick it. To Cannon Hauser for a three. Hauser would lead the Chargers with 15. Carroll led 11 to 8 after one. But Southside, they were down. Jalen Lattimore, no, nah, he didn't play. No Ashton Johnson. So Derek Rue stepping up. He had 13 points. You saw him get the two there. Then it's Amari in Washington. He's been doing it all season long. He had 16 points. And the Archers survived shorthandedly against Carroll 43 39. 
Winger on a three game winning streak, but they hadn't played since January 7th. The Saints at Bishop Lures and Nick Thompson. Oh, he's one heck of a football player. Kid can hoop as well. He gets the tip in there for the Lures Knights. The Saints coming the other way. Sam Campbell and Campbell is mm -mm good from deep. Matt Kostov, you can better believe he is liking that. Lures though, they can shoot the basketball as well. Nelson Kanapke, dog, oh, answering with a three of his own. The Saints, you're gonna see him go to the big guy, Joe Kelly. Kelly gets the basket. It's just a one point game here. And this was tight throughout. Cadell Wallace had 26 to lead Lures as the Knights win 53-47 in the Battle of the Bishops. Last stop for SEC boys action, North and Wayne. The Bruins haven't played a game in almost two weeks, but uh, you know what, Taylor Jackson wasn't rusty at all. Jackson, the senior, had 41 points and 17 rebounds to lead the Bruins. Then it's Dolman Alexander with the basket. Northrop out to a 12-3 lead in the first quarter. More from Northrop, or rather, it is the defense of Northrop. James Mallory, the block, Devin Campos, with the bucket, Campos had 18. It's 27 to five, Northrop. Wayne coming the other way. Javon Lewis gonna be a good one when it's all said and done. He gets the bucket, but Jalen Jackson coming up with the steal here and finding Jaden Smith with the punch. Smith had 13 as Northrop wins it, 84. 68. Girls side of the SAC with a win tonight. The Homestead girls would lock up the SAC title. It'd be their sixth conference title in seven seasons of SAC play. Second quarter action. Well, Kendall Tyree says, I'm going to try not to make it easy. She drains the three for Northside, but Homestead led 32 to 9 at that point. Later in the second, on the break, this is a thing of beauty. The ball ends up in Ayanna Patterson's hands, and uh, Miss Patterson does what she does. She had 25 and 8. And the Spartans were up by 29 at the half. Third quarter, Maggie Kinsley, the senior, knocks down the bucket, and Homestead clinches the SAC title 69-21, to the final. Um, it feels great. I mean, just to come back from last year with us uh, not being able to win last year, and this is our redemption year ultimately. So it was good to uh, get this win here tonight and solidify our SAC championship. As a team, it just means a lot. We've worked really hard this season. We're hoping for a long run, and clutching the SAC, it just, uh, it's a start for us. It's just a start. Now, Snyder gave Homestead all they could handle last week. The Panthers looking for their 13th win in their last 14 games. First quarter, though, Concordia putting up a fight. It's Kaylin Bollinger with the three, and the Cadets led 9-8 to eight at that point. But Snyder would start to take over. Akilah Sims has to love the play of Jaya Lovett. How good has she been this season? She gets the bucket there. It's a 17-11 Snyder lead. And then you're going to see Miss Lovett do it again. A little Euro step for the senior from Snyder. Snyder leading 14 to 40 to 16. Then it's Janae Donahue with a bucket for the Panthers as Snyder wins this one by a final of 74 to 36. Moving on, we're talking about Southside. Coach Juanita Goodwell picking up her 200th career win last Friday night for the Archers. Southside hosting Carol Olivia Smith, dialing long distance. Smith, the senior, had 29 in this game, but Carol was up by 18 in the third. Smith again finding Justice Billingsley, and Justice is served on this play. But Carol's lead still in the double digits. Later in the third, Jasmine Anderson driving and finding the bottom of the cup. Then you'll see Alexi Castator take it all the way in. Taylor Fordyce had 25 for Carroll as Carroll beats Southside 80 to 56. At Wayne Manor, the Generals hosting Northrop the Bruins looking for their fourth straight win. And yeah, it's gonna help when you have Saniya Jackson and Nevaeh Jackson. Jackson with the score right there, 59 to 35, Northrop in the lead. You saw Sidney Gorman also for Wayne be honored for the most threes in a game that happened earlier this season. Amelia Diaz says, hey, I'd like to break that record. But she gets a baseline floater there for Wayne. However, it's 63-44, Northrop in the lead. Later in the fourth, Northrop, Saniya Jackson. What a night, 20 points, 15 boards for Saniya. And then Nevaeh Jackson to the cup, 21 points and 10 for her. The Jackson Twins combining for 41 and 25 as Northrop rolls 73 to 50 over Wayne. Our final stop in the SAC, we're talking Battle of the Bishops, ladies style, Dwinger at Lures, Lures and a parent 
in traffic with the hoop and the harm. This one back and forth. The Saints go into Mackenzie Sokol. She drills the three and gets fouled. Sokol had 17 points and that would lead the Saints. Lewis coming the other way and apparent again. Apparently, she's pretty good. She had 14 points and that would lead the Knights. But Miss Sokol had herself an evening. You'll see her with the pilfer and the pair as the Saints do beat the Knights 48 to 35. Your final in this one. Well, that is going to do it for the SAC tonight. But coming up after the break, we're taking you to see the top ranked team in the 2A state poll. Yeah, less than a week after playing in the NECC tournament title game, number one Central Noble squaring off with Eastside, this time in Butler. Meanwhile, the Garrett girls try to run their winning streak to 19 games. They had a date with West Noble and we're going to head over to Ohio for a matchup between 11 and 1 Antwerp and 10 and 2 Ayersville it was a packed house. We got all that and more coming up on the Highlight Zone. We are the Amber Archers and this is the Highlight Zone. We are the Eastside Blazers. Welcome back to the Highlight Zone. Yeah! Well, they had themselves a good time tonight because this past Saturday, both Central Noble and Eastside went to the NECC tournament title game. Undefeated, yeah, were the Cougars, but uh, only one team would leave that way. Actually, they were both undefeated going in. John Bodie's team beating the Blazers by 18 for the conference tournament crown. Less than a week later, 2A number one Central Noble and 2A number six Eastside squaring off yet again, this time with a huge conference title implications for the regular season title. Start of the second quarter, it's Sam Asijin. And you know what? There's only more than one Asijin that could score the basketball, but the Blazers up 15 to eight. Later in the second, Logan Fry. He drains it, and Eastside up by 10, 18 to 8, and feeling good, especially on their home court. Connor Siege in the future, Wisconsin Badger nails the three and got fouled to cut into that lead. But Hugh Henderson popping a triple here. You'll see Logan Guard going the other way, but guess what? It was Eastside's night. Whatever Ed Bentley did over the week, it worked because Eastside avenges the loss in the title game, 42 to 34, to knock off the number one team in the state's. To a pole. Nice. Hey, in the ACAC, Woodland hosting Heritage. Woodland's all time leading scorer, Joe Reedy, committing to St. Francis earlier this week. And, well, Joe Reedy showing you why they like him at St. Francis, showing off the mid range game right there. It's a 29 27 lead for Woodland. Later, Luke Saylor. We know this kid can shoot. We've seen him do it on the highlight zone before, and the game is tied at 30. Reedy at six foot seven, such a tough matchup when he can put the ball on the deck. He gets the dupe. Dalton Watson coming the other way for Heritage. Kid is a heck of a baseball player, gonna play some D1 ball on the next level on the diamond, but simply too much woodland in this one, which was back and forth all night. Braden Smith nails the three, and Woodland escapes with a 54-48 win over Heritage. In the NLC, Warsaw tied for first at 3-0 in the conference coming in. The Tigers on the road at Concord. This is the Minutemen moving the ball up the court. It's Jack Darcy with a jumper, but Warsaw's got Jackson Gold, and Jackson Gold is having one heck of a season. And matter of fact, he had one heck of a night. Gold with the bucket there. He had 28 in this game. Malachi Emmons to Thomas Burkett. That's a nice bucket there for Concord. You're going to see Tyler Kuhn splash a three for Warsaw. This one went down to the wire. However, the Tigers do fall at Concord 58 to 56. Over in Ohio, great matchup at Antwerp. The Archers 11 and 1 hosting an Ayersville team that came in 10 and 2. Archers out hot. The University of Finley recruit Jagger Landers with the bucket down low. Then it's Caden Recker. To the basket for two. Archers up by a pair early. Then it's Landers. He's six foot seven and he's hitting step back 15 footers. That's just unfair. Antwerp up by four. Ayersville, though, they came to play. Isaac Miller to Carter Michael with the lay in right there. Then you can see Jake Trevino bring it up and Jake Trevino decides to pull up. Good decision. He knocks it down. Pilots take the lead there. They're up by one. But Landon Brewer, the stud sophomore. Brewer to the cup as Antwerp wins 73 to 59 over Ayersville. 
Northeast State girls action, Columbia City, Norwell, and Huntington North all tied for the conference lead at 4-1 in any eight play. The Eagles looking to stay in the hunt with a win against DeKalb. This is going to help. That's first quarter action. Danielle Durham drills the three, and Columbia City out to a 14-zip lead. His team has got a lot of shooters, and Rebecca Marshall is one of them. You saw her knock down the two. It's 20 to nothing, Columbia City. DeKalb trying to get something going. This is their first field goal of the game. It came in the second quarter. That was Lily Cone for three. But Rebecca Marshall going to play college basketball at Grace. And you can see why the Lancers won her. She can shoot it. Columbia City looking good. They win it 62 to 30 over DeKalb. Like Columbia City, Norwell coming in 4-1 in Northeast 8 play. The Knights at New Haven. And the Knights, uh, well, they were off and running early in this game. Kennedy filling with the bucket for Eric Thornton's team. And this, this is not a replay. You're going to see another turnover, and you're going to see Miss Filling laying it in, and Norwell already up double digits in the second quarter. You'll see Lily Norris again off another New Haven turnover. Get the bucket for Norwell, and Norwell cruises in this one. The final night 64, Bulldogs just 16. Garrett girls won the NECC tournament title last weekend. The Railroaders looking for their 19th win in a row, this time against West Noble. First quarter action, Bailey Kellum on the good kick out for Morgan Ostrowski. You can't give her that much space. Kellum had 25 on the game, and that was Garrett's first basket of the game. Then it's Morgan Ostrowski doing it herself. Ostrowski going to play college volleyball at IUPUI, so you know she's an athlete. And Garrett up by five in the early going. West Noble on the bomb here. It's Mackenzie Maybe. No maybe about it. She's going to lay it in for two. But Morgan Ostrowski and Garrett simply too much for Bob Lapidot's team. Garrett wins this one 56 to 22. Garrett now 21 and one on the season. Final stop for high school hoops. We're talking Central Noble at East Side. The Blazers looking for their third win in their last four games. But Central Noble would provide a challenge. However, that's Grace Kreischer down low as East Side led by two in the first. Skyler Kessler having a nice season. Kessler into the lane and it's dropping in. Bucket for East Side, who's now up by four. Central Noble, no give up. Abby Heil working it down low. Give her credit for that. But Grace Kreischer would get the basket here. However, Central Noble with a big second half as Central Noble comes back to beat Eastside by a final of 37 to 31. We got more Highlight Zone coming up next, including your Peter Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Night. What up, it's your man Flo Rod, and right now you're watching the Highlight Zone. You're getting crunk in the highlight zone. Hey, uh, last week it was a uh, double dip for the gem of the night. Darian Brooks with a nasty jam to help New Haven knock off then number one Leo and Olivia Smith with a buzzer beater to help Southside coach Juanita Goodwell earn her 200th career victory. What does this week have in store? Well, here is your latest gem of the night, courtesy of Peter Franklin Jewelers. And we got another number one team knocked off. It's Eastside's Logan Fry burying the three. This is more of a, a body of work more than it is just the play. We're talking about knocking off the number one team in the state that beat you by almost 20 less than a week ago. Congrats to East Side, and then on the ladies' side, that's just good basketball. Ayana Patterson, it was Evie Bottoms to Claire Landrigan to Ayana Patterson. This is how you run the break as Patterson and Homestead clinches the SAC title. Final stop tonight, uh, kind of a weird Friday. No uh, Comets game, no Mad Ants game, but the Mastodons taking over the Coliseum. Dons hosting Robert Morris in Horizon League showdown. First half, Bobby Planunas. Yeah, it was a tie game, and, well, would this be a nail-biter? The answer would be no. You'll see Rob Petty with the putback as PFW wins this one over Robert Morris, 86-62. to I'm Glenn Marini, and we'll see you next Friday night for the Highlight Zone.